It's still the breakfast in PLUS TV Africa. Since Nigeria's independence in 1960, the electoral process has always been manual. Now, from voter registration, accreditation, voting process, which involves Tom printing the ballot papers, ticking and sticking it in the ballot box, uh, it was quite different for 2007, where the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, introduce the direct data capture, that's the DDC method for voter registration for the election that held that year. Now with the DDC, INEC had hoped to eliminate double registration, double voting and other electoral malpractices. However, the conduct of the 2007 polls was widely criticized and pronounced fraudulent by local and international observers. The winner of the 2007 presidential election, a former president, Umaru Musa Yaradwa admitted that the exercise had shortcomings. Now, in 2011, the Independent National Electoral Commission, uh, that is INEC, introduced the automated fingerprint identification system, but the technology also fell short of the expectation. It could only create a digital register to erase double registration. It was also incapable of verifying the identity of voters at the polling station. Now, in the build-up to the 2015 elections, INEC introduced the permanent voters card, that's the PVCs, and the smart card reader technology in an apparent effort to minimize election fraud and regain. It was touted as a game changer as the smart card reader's introduction helped reduce electoral fraud, according to expert. Now, in 2020, the electoral body also introduced a result viewing portal that's the IREV, enabling Nigerians to view polling units results in real time as voting ends on election day. Now, following that year, INEC launched the uh, bimodal voter accreditation system, that's the BIVAS, which is 2023 we're talking about. One of the objectives of this is to eliminate identity thefts on election day and also using another person's permanent voters card, among other issues. Mohammed Abdullahi is a public relations officer right here in Lagos and public affairs analyst. He joins us. Abdullahi, thank you so much for being part of the show this morning. Uh, thank you for having me. Good morning, Nigerians. Let me share your thoughts on, you know, our use of technology in some parts of our election, not the entire, entire you know, conduct or electoral process. Do you believe in the uh, beavers to help reduce election malpractice, fraud, and every other error that you can imagine? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, to a very large extent, uh, uh, I believe that uh, the beavers is a, is a game changer, even though it uh, has its own shortcoming. Uh, you know, things that are associated with uh, every kind of technology all over the world, because you remember you still have uh, people at the back end. So if these people are compromised one way or the other, it might affect things. But on a general scale, I think the beavers will be a very a, a game changer. If uh, what INEC has been telling Nigerians, you know, for the past one year or so, and even, uh, I mean, for the past two years or so, since the introduction of beavers, if you remember, in a by-election in, uh, in Delta State, and then it's being used, in some other elections like the Osho elections and number elections and even equity elections and we've been we've seen consistency you know of of of, of the use of, of, of this uh cutting edge technology uh so i think it's it's it's, it's uh it will be a game changer because like you rightly mentioned uh INEC has mentioned that um they have two cardinal objectives for introducing the beavers one which you mentioned is uh which INEC mentioned is the fact that you know to i to to eliminate identity theft you have you have to go to the polling unit with your PVCs, and the beavers had to capture either your fingerprints or your face when you are trying to accredit in order to vote. Without this, it's not possible. Before this time around, I mean, before the introduction of the beavers, uh, earlier on, I, INEC had other uh, facilities like the incidence form, where if probably. You know, we can't identify who you are and so on. We have the incidents form, and that largely has been flawed. And INEC has made it, made it categorical this time around that the incidents form is not going to be used. It's been eliminated. Everything, everybody that has to vote must 
must pass through the beaver's accreditation. And secondly, the very good advantage of the beavers, if you are following me, is the fact that, you know, as voting, as you are accredited and you are voting, the beaver is recording and is transmitting results real time from the various polling units to the INEC, you know, uh, results viewing centers. So it is, it, it leaves room for z almost zero manipulation because all these things are going to be done real time. Those, the, 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 the challenges that we may have is the fact that, yes, if, for instance, INEC did not, you know, uh, train the professionals that will handle this beaver as well, that might be a big challenge because even, like I mentioned earlier, no matter the the the, the, the use or, or, or uh, I mean, how the technology is so cutting edge, if you don't have professionals that will handle it, if you don't train them well, that might be a big challenge because I can't handle the beavers, for instance. I only know the beavers, I know about it, but I don't know how to operate it. So if you allow mediocres, you know, you allow people who you don't, who, uh, who are not well trained in handling the beavers to handle it, that might pose a big challenge. And that might indeed disenfranchise many Nigerians. So I want to give uh, uh, INEC the benefit of the doubt that they've, you know, secured the cutting edge technology. But again, they've put in uh, manpower, you know, in place that will handle this uh, cutting edge technology. So, I, you know, in a simple words, I, I, I want to give uh, INEC the benefit of the doubt that come uh, Saturday, and subsequent elections, uh, the use of the beavers will eliminate a whole lot in terms of uh, what, we use, what we are used to in, uh, in terms of election and practices in Nigeria in the past years. I mean, let's, let's go back to talk about, you know, the tribunal case uh, uh, that concerned Adelike. Uh, one of the issues that was raised is the issue of overvoting. And now you ask yourself, overvoting and uh, the use of the beavers, how did we get there? So do you think that the beavers have the capacity to dictate multiple votes? For instance, we know that a lot of persons would acquire, which, which is very criminal. The Electoral Act already states that uh, you can't be a holder of, uh, you know, one PVC. And so when you have people who have voted, uh, for instance, you have a PVC to vote in a certain polling unit and you go to another polling unit. Do you think that the beavers have what it takes to dictate you know, the issue of uh, multiple uh, PVC holders or multiple voting <laughs> at the time. Definitely. But, but by what uh, INEC has been telling us in terms of the beavers, it's, uh, remember also the beavers was used in registering, I mean, and authentic authenticating uh, the, regist the, the, the INEC register in the past, in the, in, in the recent past. So what INEC has been telling Nigerians is the fact that the beavers has the, capability and ability to detect uh, multiple registration and also to detect fraud. Like you mentioned, you can't, you know, vote probably in Agege and then go to Yanopaja, I mean in Lagos, and then, you know, you want to vote uh, again. It's I, don't, I think with the beavers, um, I'm, I'm sure with what so, Idek has so been telling us, uh, I keep because we don't have what Idek has been saying. Uh, Abdullahi, we don't uh, have time. Uh, it doesn't. If, if yeah. that's the case, how come... Mm. Uh, we still also had the issue of overvoting in the case of Adeleke in Oshun State. Now, now I, I want to leave that to INEC because I remember uh, INEC has also joined, uh, you know, you know, in, in appealing for that case because it's like uh, it's, it's, it's directly uh, uh, their their duty. So I, I I wouldn't want to comment on that because it's still in court. The governor elects. I mean, the governor has said he will appeal the case, and I'm, I've, I've read somewhere in the media where INEC is also joining uh, in, in the case to, to, to defend that, that there, I, probably there was no overvoting, and maybe uh, it's, it's another thing entirely that, uh, that, the, that the judges, uh, you know, depended their uh, ruling upon. So I, I wouldn't want to co comment more than that on that case, because, you know, uh, it's these, these, these are cases that's that fine. We'll, 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 we'll just move away from that. Thank you so much, Mohammed Abdullahi, for being part of our show this morning. We appreciate your thoughts, and we also hope that you're ready to go cast your vote uh, come the 25th of February. Yes, thank you very much. Thank All right, then that's it. That's the size of our conversation on The Breakfast this morning. We do appreciate you. Thank you so much for being part of it. We'll return tomorrow. All things Bini Core. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa, Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Ebopo. Do have a great morning.